Alright guys, Dustin here, and today we're going over something a little different. Um, it's about zeroing your laser properly on your handgun. Came up with something after reading a book, and you know, most of us are just going to zero it to our dot or our sights, but there can be a better way so your offset isn't as great. But first, shout out to our sponsor, Olight, who's having another flash sale. January 13th through 14th, they are releasing their Warrior X3. Now this one's kind of cool because 2500 lumens, so it's all upgraded with zirconium beads in the front so you can break glass with it. I was gonna try it, but yeah, I liked my windows, so we're not doing it. But 2,500 lumens, you can check it out, up to 35% off, free shipping over $49. If you come in too late for the sale, use the code TOPSHOTDUSTIN for 10% off site-wide. Now let's get on with the video. So shout out to my buddy Ryan Kleckner. I was going through his book, finally I bought it a long time ago, I didn't read it yet, and I found a paragraph on laser sights for aiming, and you know, for the most part, it's kind of, a novelty really unless you're using night vision but i use it on my handguns because i use the light and it's an integrated laser into the light so why not at least have it zeroed right but the problem is okay i usually zero at about seven yards okay well the laser is way down here my sights are way up here and the bore is right here so we have three lines that have to intersect so probably the same as everyone else i've always just kind of creaked this into say seven yards Figured that's a good self-defense distance, so my green laser will hit my red dot. They intersect right at seven yards. Now, up closer, it's going to be a bit, a little bit lower, but out further, 15, 25 yards, that green laser is like way up, and so my shots would be shooting way down. It'd be a bad miss. Well, Ryan goes over when they had their rifles and in infrared you use running night vision and the laser designator was like two inches off to the right he would zero his rifle so the point of impact of the bullet would be two inches to the left i'm like gosh that's genius unless you're needing to shoot at a golf ball or something you're, you're you know but they're usually shooting bigger targets like that so you just know that you have a little offset and any marksman knows oh yeah it, it, there's offset all the time if you're up close with your scoped rifle you're going to be needing to aim high because your bullet impact will be low so you get that. So we're just going to translate that to laser today and let you see. We're going to scoot up to seven yards and do it by default first. So here we are at seven yards and my laser, it's, yeah, it's so bright. This is a bad day for it, but here we are. Uh, it, my laser's touching my red dot. I mean, it's really close to it. So we're just going to go with it because your mounts on these do have a little wiggle in the first place. So it's not going to be pinpoint every shot. But we're going to see what we got. Now, yes, we are suppressed, but this is a longer barrel than these. 124s usually kind of go a little fast. All right, so I'm going to laser only. So we're just going to go laser only and see how it's looking at seven yards. I, I, I wasn't quite ready for that. Oh, snap, same hole. Oh! Do I mess it up? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. But so we have a good group. It's a little low, which I guess is 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 likely because if my red dot is zeroed for about 15 yards, the red dot's a little above. So once I put the red and green, yeah, yeah. So that you're seeing kind of just a bore offset right there, but it works. Let's uh, scoot up just before we scoot back. Let's see what three yards would look like with this seven yard zero. I need a new aiming point so we don't hit the same spot. We're going to put that on that little X right there, see what three yards looks like, just using the laser. Okay. There it is. Hi. Okay, good. It's spread out so you believe that there's more than one hole there. Okay, so we're a little high at three, we're a little low at seven. Let's back up and see if I can even see my shots at 15. I'll mark them first. Wow. I can barely see that, but now I do. So... All right, we have our shots marked. Let's shoot. Holy smokes, that went low. I'm out of ammo. All that aiming prep for nothing. Okay. Where's my dot? There it is. Oh, got a good group, though. I hope y'all can see the green on camera. I can barely see it here. Oh, we had a malfunction in our canic. Haven't had one of those before. Just like, didn't want to feed in the next one. Okay, so there we have it. We've got a different zero when we have it uh, slaved to our red dot, co-witnessed right there. Now we're going to go with what Ryan says in his book. We're going we're gonna to zero this dot to always be three inches below the red dot. 
So the beauty of making it parallel to it is it doesn't matter what distance I'm at. So if I put my red dot at the base of the S here, I'm here. So when I was back there further, it's a little further. When we go back to 15, it should be the same. We'll get a fresh target first and start shooting. What we're gonna look for is consistency. I'm gonna put the laser right on the uh, white, and so it should be hitting high all the way as we go back. So if I wanted to hit my white bullseye, I'd put the layers, laser down below. So laser right in the white. one one hole but right about two and a half inches let's back up see if it's the same spot so to interrupt any of y'all going you missed the bullseye yes we know this is about marksmanship having a point of reference and then knowing to compensate later so what we're hoping is that my next group hits right on top of the last group at three instead of moving using the laser I'm glad that one was a little sloppier because now you can see, yes, they're going through the same hole. Pretty cool, same spot. Let's back up to 15. So I think we solved our offset distance problem. The thing is to just be a marksman, know what it's doing. And so if I ever needed to do a, well, let's, let's shut up and shoot first. There it is. Hard to see, but I got it. It dropped a little from, from before. I can't find my dot. There it is. Sweet. Okay, I actually threw that one because I didn't see my laser, so I just shot it. Sweet. It, right in the same group. So for a few of them, we're just a tiny bit uh, lower. But for the most part, we had a nice cluster. So to recap, and why this is important is, okay, of course, these are the shoot throughs here, but remember we were low, we were high, we were, we, we were kind of all over. We had a big stretch going on, and especially at 15 yards, it dropped. But when we zeroed three inches below, we stayed in a nice clean cluster. Forget that one, I couldn't see my laser. So yes, I was always aiming here, always hitting here. So if I needed to hit here, I would aim here. So if I needed to shoot a Firebird target, I would just aim a little lower. We're gonna snap that on one of these still targets and, and aim a little lower. Make sure that our mirrors are in. We have one round. We'll aim a little below it, see what we get. No, I'm not using my red dot. That's why my head may look funny. <laughs> okay, that's fun. So that's how I'm gonna zero my lasers from now on, and now you can too, and not have to deal with that weird cross zero as you go to different distances. Thanks to Ryan for the tip. Thanks to you for watching today, guys. Okay, I love you, bye-bye. Yeah!